Hello and welcome to this ProStructure Connect Edition onboarding video guide session. In the last video, we have seen how to add some basic concrete elements with ProStructure Connect Edition. And in this video, I will demonstrate to you how to add reinforcement to those concrete elements using ProStructure Connect Edition. So let's begin. Start off with the file that we created in the previous session. And as the application opens, just make sure that you've got the correct workflow selected by going there to the top. Make sure that it's in a concrete workflow and the reinforcement will be placed with these options on top. Let's start with the pad footing. Very simple. Select the option and as expected, you'll be able to configure bar size, quantity, spacing, offsets, all of that for each individual bar, top bar, bottom bar and side bar as well as the cover can be defined. End conditions can be specified for each rod as well as starter bars or dowels can be added to your pad footing sizes. So select the concrete element and add that reinforcement according to the configuration that you just did. Now to add the starter bars, simply select the, the pad footing, the column and it is placed. Accept that and you can repeat the process for the other pad footings as well. Now let's go to the continuous pad footing. Now also here yeah, you'll be able to specify specific quantities for top bar, bottom bar, bar sizes, spacing, layouts, offsets, all of that is available. Go to your lap options. Lap options is for instance a limitation on transport. I've set mine to 6 meters so my rods my bars will not be longer than six meters for this. Each one can also then be specified individually on end conditions. So simply select that concrete element and the reinforcement is placed. You can see it both on the front view or side view as well as an isometric that my 3D reinforcement has been placed. Accept that and let's continue with the column. So ProStructure remembers the last setting. So if you Look at the quantities that's already in there for far side and for far face and short face. Once I've selected my concrete element, it's been updated. But let me show you how simple it is to add it. Both tires must be cleared. So let's start off with the verticals. Add a label to it, for instance V1, and now we can add specific end conditions, bar sizes. So you can add offsets, I'm going to add a little bit of offset to the top end and now we'll be able to distribute this configuration throughout the element. So different options but I'm going to use the top one to select all the bars, vertical bars will be placed immediately. So there you can see my graphic is updated in the 3D model but my bars are extruding so let me add a negative value in there and you'll see that it will be sunken into the concrete element. So now we've got our vertical bars, similarly we can set our lap options if the, the length is too long. So let's go to our ties, add different ties, zone 1, select the bar size that we want to, spacing for each or one of those ties that we need to add, start and end positions. Now I've got the basic data captured for the zone data, you can have multiple zones if you want to. Let's do tie data, add a label and add end conditions selected for instance a hook on the one side and on the other side we need a 135 degree hook so use the graphic on the right hand side and select and as you select you'll see that the graphic is created both in the preview as well as in the 3d model as you go along that's how simple it is to update that column so i've got a complete column reinforced now so let's do the same process because ProStructure remembers it, simply select the other column and it will be reinforced in the same way. Accept that and done. Let's go over to the beam. The beam process will be similar. Select the shortcut to start off with the beam. Let's select the concrete. But now it will load the last configuration as we had it. So let's maybe just want to show you something interesting over here. On the left hand side it's indicated in green, red is indicated on red. Over here we can have our clearances specified, longitudinal lines, similar to the column. 
configured beforehand so let me take one off and just to show you how simple it is to configure the longitudinal reinforcement start off by adding one the zone label i would call it bottom the location will be bottom as well and in this example i'm going to add four bars for the reinforcement data you can have specific data loaded for each zone so i'm going to label mine b1 for bottom it's a continuous bar size needs to be specified i can add offset and end condition and even rotate it then select these options as you select them you will note that the graphic is updated so now i've got my fourth one selected and my longitudinal lines so our reinforcement is in place lap options can also be defined separately so for the top location i can add a staggered stock length of six meters and do similar to the bottom section add it change the stock length remember i said i've got a transport constraint for instance now the stirrups stirrups can be done for one for all of the different zones or you can have one for each zone I'm just going to add an extra one just to show how simple it is, give it a label, uh, end condition on both sides and then use the graphic on the right hand side to detail the configuration. So select those corners for instance and we've got a U shape for our beam. Add an extra one if you want to, put an extra uh, label in there section 2 of my zones give a little bit of an offset to make sure that there's space for it to find the end conditions and then after you've defined both end conditions simply select the start and end point of that section that's how simple it is to add reinforcement to a beam accept that configuration and the 3d is updated now the same process will be for the wall but to make it simple i'm going to start from my parameter trimmers and add those my previous configuration I'm happy with that select the concrete element and it will add the trimmers on the edges of my panel or wall same can be done for our openings so let's go to the openings there's my configuration select the concrete element and as you see it will update only one opening at a time so i've got a few so i simply just need to rotate the placement and click save as i go along and we'll duplicate the configuration you can see almost complete and now it's done let's accept that placement so the last one will be to add the wall itself as expected we can define bar size spacing and all those details Remember, lap option in this example. We've got a constraint, so let's add that constraint everywhere, um, both far side and near side. And then look at your end conditions. That can also be specified by locking it. So I can group it together by just changing one of the options. I'm able to apply a specific end condition to all my different bar sets. Select the concrete element, and you'll note that's how simple it is to place reinforcement to a wall element now the last one that we still have open is our slab so let me just fit view and adjust my view so it's slightly that you can see select the slab shortcut again we're going to go from the outside add the corners first have that detail specified beforehand different levels I can use and now select my concrete element and then you can see that those trimmers are added to the outside of that slab let's go to zoom into that corner or that opening let's add trimmers to our openings i've got some defined already number of levels will give me two levels so top and bottom level select the concrete and now same as the wall i need to um, it will only open reinforce the one opening i need to save it and it will jump to the other one and, and add that one as well accept it Go to the big slab reinforcement maybe i need to change my bar size for my slab it's a bit too small so let me adjust it simply select the drop down set on according to your standard that you've associated with your file and there i can define everything change end conditions uh, lab conditions options end conditions select the slab the concrete element 
and my reinforcement is placed. So there yeah, I've got my whole model now reinforced and that's how complicated it is to add reinforcement to a concrete element with ProStructure Connect Edition. Thank you for watching this video and I hope that you have found this video insightful. On the screen you will find other ways to get more information about ProStructure Connect Edition. In the next video we will show you how to add positioning and bar marks in ProStructure.